Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I rise today with a question for my friends on the other side of the aisle. When will we get down to the business of putting people back to work? My constituents in the first district of Rhode Island sent me here to do everything I can to get our economy back on track, pave the way for sustained recovery, and get Rhode Islanders back to work. And that's why my colleagues and I in the Democratic minority are focused on job creation, economic development, and debt reduction. However, the first actions by the new Republican majority during their first month have not been consistent with these principles. Unfortunately, my constituents, like Rhonda Taylor, for example, from North Providence, Rhode Island, whom I met with yesterday, do not have months and months to wait for my Republican colleagues to get their priorities straight. She's already been waiting and waiting. And that's because Rhonda lost her job in the information technology field due to outsourcing almost three years ago. And her unemployment compensation benefits were exhausted nearly a year ago. Rhonda is a mother of three. She's liquidated her savings and sold all of her possessions. And now she's afraid she'll become homeless. Rhonda proves why there is no time to spare. We need to focus on policies that create jobs today. The struggles of our unemployed friends and neighbors are heartbreaking and unfortunately all too common. People like Rhonda have no time to wait. The partisan games have to end. Unfortunately, Rhonda's story is not unique. I've been hearing similar messages for the past year from men and women all across Rhode Island. But instead of working on policies that will help real Americans like Rhonda, my friends on the other side of the aisle are playing politics with the federal budget and the national debt, a budget that even Republic economists say could lead to double-digit unemployment and reverse the economic growth that is starting to take hold. Blind budget cuts my colleagues in the majority are pursuing won't help people like Rhonda but would rather do more to cut jobs than save to create them. What my friends fail to recognize is that partisan political games will not solve our nation's unemployment crisis, which plagues nearly 14 million of our friends and neighbors. The fact of the matter is, the challenges facing us as a nation are not Democratic challenges or Republican challenges. They are our challenges, and they require American solutions. The work is demanding, yes, and it will test the will of both parties to make difficult choices. But as a Congress, we need to both responsibly reduce the deficit, cut spending, but also make the smart investments that will create jobs now and guarantee the prosperity of our great nation. Our nation must make the investments in education, innovation, infrastructure, science and research that are critical to rebuilding our economy and putting people back to work. Because we cannot compete in the short term if we cannot innovate. And we cannot innovate in the long term if we fail to provide our children with access to a high quality education. We cannot move goods and services through, throughout the economy if our infrastructure is crumbling. And America cannot make things again if we do not support the research, the entrepreneurs, the small businesses, and manufacturers that transform ideas into new products. People like Rhonda back home in Rhode Island and hardworking people all across this nation have suffered for too long. We must have the courage to set the right priorities, cut what doesn't work or isn't needed, live within our means and make the right investments that ensure our ability to compete in the global economy today and into the future. I call on my Republican colleagues to join me so that we can focus on putting Americans back to work by developing common sense solutions and focusing on jobs. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and yield back the balance of my time.